Holly and today I'm going to be talking about how I got a level 7 in IBSL math. So first I just want to start off with saying that math is hard. I found math very hard. I am kind of a math person I guess you could say but I kind of almost don't believe in the idea that people are or aren't math people. I definitely think it comes more naturally to some people than to other people but I also think that a lot of people are just kind of mediocre at it naturally and if you're pretty mediocre at math you could definitely get to a high level by working hard and putting in the time. So let's just get started with all of these tips. So the first thing you're going to want to do in SL math is to do your homework. And this seems like kind of an obvious tip, however, sometimes you just have so much other homework that your math homework doesn't seem as important. But your math homework is actually very, very important, especially because doing the constant practice problems will allow you to continuously get better and also to put that into your long-term memory versus just memorizing it right before the test. So if you do at least every other question, you can get kind of a sense of how the problems progress, some of the easier problems, some of the harder problems, and you can see where your strengths and your weaknesses lie. Okay, so the second thing is going to be asking questions. And this is not just, I don't understand this problem, or can you please help me with this problem? It's more specific questions. So you, you try the problem and you get to a point where you just can't keep going. So you come up with a really specific question, I don't understand why I'm not getting the answer because you know I followed these steps and then this part of the equation doesn't seem to be solvable. Something like that, then the person that's helping you, your teacher, or if it's another student, they can help you identify where you're going wrong and then you can get better. So yeah, that's the second thing, ask lots of questions. It's often good to write them down on a sticky note or something. So then if you go in for extra help at lunch or after school or whatever, then you can just ask the questions that were on your mind while you were studying. Because oftentimes you think that you'll remember what you want to ask, but if you don't mark it, at least, at least mark the question that you want to ask about. But sometimes even writing down the question could make it a lot easier in the moment when you're asking the question. The third thing that I think is really important that I don't know if everybody does is making to remember lists. So that would be a list of the things that you made as mistakes or you didn't understand during the unit. So you're going to go through, as you're actually learning the unit, you're going to go through and when you have a mistake or when you don't understand something, you're going to mark it in a different colored pen or highlighter. You can use whatever color you want. You could even color code it like things that were really hard, things you want to redo, things that are just mistakes that you got over. You could color code it like that or however you really want to. And then afterwards, you're going to use those mistakes to make a list. So for example, it could be really simple like this. This one is my math midterm to remember. So I just wrote down a bunch of things like for perpendicular vectors, the dot product equals zero. It's things like that or, you know, 7t after to find the point, check the domain when graphing, finding the x values. Some of these would not make sense to anyone else, but since you were the one that made the mistake, you were the one that wrote it down on this list, when you read it over the night before your test, the morning of your test, this is just kind of a final check through to make sure you know what is a common mistake that you are not going to make on that test. Because when you're in the moment, these small common mistakes are the ones that you're going to make. You're not going to do something it's unlikely that you're going to make a big mistake you've never made before. If you're probably going to do something like, you know, finding the obtuse angle instead of the acute angle. I've done that many times. So I put that on my to remember list and on the final exam I didn't make that mistake so that was good. And then as you go on your to remember lists can be a little nicer. Like this one for example, I typed up near the end of my first year of the course and then I wrote down the things for each unit versus for sometimes when I'm just writing a test I would just you know, write it all on the list. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be useful. Something else that's pretty useful is having friends. So if you have friends in your math class or just peers that kind of help each other out, that can be really helpful because when you're sitting at home doing your math homework and you don't know what to do, it's always such a blessing to be able to just text the group chat and ask them how to do it. And oftentimes you'll have that one or two really nice people that will respond to you and help you out. So that is great. And if you can help out other people, then all the better because you guys are helping each other out. It's a nice community. That would be a good tip for me is to ask your friends and do not give up because if you give up and just don't do your homework at all, you're not really gonna learn anything. You gotta persevere even when it's hard. I sat at my desk numerous times 
crying or near tears because I had no idea what I was doing, I was tired, I had other homework, and I didn't know what to do for math. So I tried my best, I wrote out my questions, and then I went in for extra help or I asked my friends. And those are the best ways to really persevere in math because math is one of those courses that when you get it, oftentimes you get it. But getting to the point where you get it is the hard part. So then in terms of the IA, I have a video totally based on the IA and you know some general tips for doing your IA. But something I would just say specifically in terms of the math IA would be to choose a topic that's not out of your reach. Something that is graphable that you can use the content from the course in. Um, I did my IA on boiling water. So I boiled water um, in different conditions, you know, with a lid, without a lid, blah, blah, blah. I used a temperature probe and then I graphed it. And then I went through and tried to create functions based on my graphs and, you know, using a variety of math -y things to do that. Don't totally remember because that's kind of gone from my memory at this point, but I actually really did enjoy it. And I think the experimental type of math IA is actually really interesting. There are some online with like, you know, what, like tea cooling and, you know, people throwing a ball and all that type of stuff. I actually would really recommend the experimental stuff if you want to do that. Some of the ones with medicine seemed a little bit harder. Um, there's some that are just like formula based and it's really hard to get that um, explorative tone to what you're writing because you want it to be an exploration. Um, so it's things that, oh, I think I'll try this. And then you actually write in your IA, then I decided to try this and this didn't work. So then I tried this and I, you know, I rolled with it and blah, blah, blah. I did that and that. And you go through what you were doing and why you were doing it. You don't just say, this theorem proves this. This theorem was from the internet and here's the theorem and it's blah, blah, blah. It's not, it's not a grade five research paper. It's a math exploration. So you actually should be doing math in your paper and you'll probably get stuck at times, but it's okay, you will get through this, just take a deep breath, and uh, yeah, talk to your teachers and your friends, yeah. So throughout the course, you're gonna wanna make some notes. So for me, when I made notes during the course, they looked kinda like this. They, I have these all linked in PDF format in a Google Drive folder that's accessible to you, so that's in the description box if you wanna check out any of the notes or lists that I made for the mathematics course. So here, for example, was the notes that I made during the course. Some are obviously more neat than others, and I have other notes that I didn't even post online because they're complete trash. But anyway, once I got to near the end of the course and then, you know, in the right before the exams, I went through unit by unit doing practice questions and rewriting my notes as more of a summary, and I actually found things that I had had misconceptions about. So I went through in this notebook and I just made, you know, two or three page summaries of each unit. So I think if you're gonna check out my notes, this is probably the most useful one to reference. Um, I also have a video where I did a flip through of that. So I have a couple math videos and they'll all be linked above where I don't remember what side it goes on. You know what I'm trying to say. And yeah, you can check out the notes if those interest you. They're all, you know, good for inspiration, good for help. If you have math questions, uh, don't ask me because I'm not gonna answer them, but um, you can definitely ask other people and use these to help you learn things. If you find mistakes in them, there are going to be mistakes in them. I'm 100% sure I don't understand everything perfectly and I probably made grammatical spelling mistakes, wrote the opposite of what I was trying to at times. You know what I mean. So that is the notes and I would suggest consistent note taking in math because some people think it's just a you know an innate understanding that you have but having the notes to reference when you're at you know in the May exams is just so useful because especially like we took it in my school, we took math up until a couple months before the exams, but then we didn't have math at the end. So you weren't constantly getting exposed to it, and there are definitely things you would forget. So I think having those notes to go back to is very, very useful. And then finally, for the exams, I would suggest doing all of the past papers. I think I did all of the past papers. I wouldn't do it during the course because sometimes your teachers might use questions from past papers. So that's almost like cheating. Just, I don't know, check with your teachers for that. But once you get to the final exam for your course and then the actual final math paper one and two that you write in uh, May of whatever year you're writing it, that is when you wanna really do all the past papers and especially focus on the part B questions because those are often the really hard questions um, except this year in the paper one, some of the part A questions were surprisingly difficult. So I would just time yourself doing them, sit down at your desk with no distractions and time yourself doing the papers. And then you can even write as you go, checking your timer like, okay, it took me 10 minutes to get to question three. Then it took me this long to get to this question. And then you can really keep in your mind 
how long approximately it should be taking you. So in the actual exam, you can check your watch and you can just think, okay, I'm on track. You know, I have enough time to spend a bit more time on this question. Or if you don't, you keep going and you come back to it. So that's, that's always some good advice. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any other math tips, leave those in the comments and we can all benefit from that. Um, well, maybe not me because I'm not taking math anymore. Uh, I do like math a lot and I really think there is value to the hard work that it takes to get to a really proficient level in mathematics and yeah that's that's all I have to say about math so let's say goodbye to math uh, or good luck good luck to you if you're doing math and uh, I'll see you in the next video bye